Tonight, federal Labor calls for an independent inquiry into the worsening Darling River fish crisis. And vintage cars on display at the annual Show and Shine in Port Lincoln. Good evening and welcome to Nightly News, your same local news team with a new look. First up tonight, Bill Shorten is calling on Prime Minister Scott Morrison to set up a task force to investigate the mass fish kill in the Darling River. An estimated one million native fish have died in the river near Menindee, just north of Broken Hill. It's been labelled an ecological disaster. Last week, hundreds of thousands of Darling River fish died after a rapid change in water temperature killed an algal bloom. The decomposing algae robbed the water of oxygen, suffocating multiple species of fish, including endangered Murray cod. You know, locals that are retired that have spent their whole life here, they haven't seen this. This isn't normal. The state's water minister, who visited Menindee to inspect the fish kill, says the ongoing drought and low inflows are to blame. We should be seeing around 4,000 and gigalitres coming down through the system in a good year. In the last six months, we've had around 30 gigalitres. So that just shows that we just don't have the natural flows at the moment. But others believe there's more to it, claiming there's been mismanagement of the system. Those lakes were full of water just years ago, but they let the water out so that they could placate their big irrigator mates at the top of the system. Unless we get things back on track, we're going to see more of it. We need to have more water returned uh, to keep the river alive. I think the people who have done this need to be held accountable. The people who have destroyed the darling, I mean, this isn't just going to go away. 100-year-old fish that have survived seven previous droughts, they couldn't get through this one. There's been a fundamental change in the river system. The federal opposition says it's time to stop pointing fingers and start investigating the cause. Opposition leader Bill Shorten sent a letter to Prime Minister Scott Morrison yesterday asking him to set up an emergency scientific task force. That has the scientists determining exactly what has happened and have it report directly to the parliament. Labor says if the findings warrant further investigation, they may consider a judicial inquiry. Meanwhile, a contractor has been hired to clean up the dead fish. In Menindi, Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. A Port Lincoln mother has told how an intruder broke into her home while she and her two children were asleep. Two teenagers have since been arrested after multiple properties were broken into during a two-hour crime spree last week. It was a harrowing ordeal young mum Ashley Henley Kennedy never hopes to go through again. Instantly scared and I instantly knew there was someone in the house. It was about 5am on Thursday morning when a thief entered their home through the front door with her two children sleeping inside. I got up and uh, looked outside and he was sort of creeping across our front lawn and then he seen me looking out the window and just ran, ran down the road. Their house was one of more than a dozen homes and cars broken into over a two hour crime spree spanning across multiple streets in the township. Keys, phones and jewellery were stolen with every break in possible due to unlocked doors. Thanks to multiple tip offs, two arrests were made a day later. A male and a female both around 18 years of age. Uh, they were both arrested in relation to um, some offending. The female was granted bail while the male was remanded in custody. He fronted court this afternoon. However, investigations into the alleged break-ins are continuing. And at the moment, these people haven't been charged with those offences, but we're hoping that further investigations will lead us to some further charges. The break-ins come as a timely reminder for residents. Yeah, check your doors and windows, absolutely, and your car, and yeah, just don't leave anything out where they can see them, that's, that's for sure. Casey Trelaw, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hill Police are investigating a break-in on Friday afternoon where a thief made off with more than $15,000 worth of goods. The burglar cut through a fly screen to gain access to the Chapel Street home between 3.30 and 5 o'clock. $8,000 worth of jewellery was stolen, including a diamond encrusted ring and a gold Pandora charm bracelet. The thief also stole four Memco purses, laptops and a money box. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. 
A Port Lincoln driver has been caught behind the wheel at more than three times the legal blood alcohol limit. Just after 1am, patrols stopped a Toyota ute on Hallett Place. The 31-year-old man allegedly recorded a reading of 0.162. The driver was issued an immediate loss of licence for 12 months and had his car impounded for 28 days. The 31-year-old man was reported for drink driving and will face court at a later date. Broken Hill and the majority of the Spencer Gulf is about to go through its first heatwave of the summer. The Silver City will be the worst off though, with the rest of the week tipped to be in the mid-40s. Fire up the AC, get the ice trays in the freezer or get down to the pool. Whatever you do to beat the heat, get ready to do it. I suppose in Broken Hill we've been somewhat lucky this year because we haven't had such high temperatures to this time of the year. The Silver City's luck is about to run out, with the rest of the week forecast to be a scorcher. The Spencer Gulf will also see a heat wave, except for Port Lincoln, it's perfect beach weather there. Over the next five days, Broken Hill will have four of them at 43 or higher, before a cool change comes across the region. Port Augusta and Port Pirie will have three days of 40 plus, while it will only have two. And in Port Lincoln, well, fine and sunny. The increase Increasing heat has prompted warnings from Broken Hill GP Ramu Nechipan. Anything in moderation is good for you. Same applies to the sun. Slip, slop, slap. Plenty of fluids. Stay in cool areas and avoid working outdoors if it's over 35 degrees. Dr Nechipan says if you do find yourself in the sun, try and cover up best you can to avoid sunburn. Find some shade and drink plenty of water to avoid overheating. He says if you're feeling dizzy, confused or feeling hot but not sweating, you might be getting heat stroke. Temperatures will be back down in the 30s by the start of next week. Patrick Ryanke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Left-wing lobby group Get Up is set to target Grey MP Rowan Ramsey at the upcoming federal election. They've created a political hit list that'll target him and 17 of his coalition counterparts. South Australia's pollies are in Get Up's firing line. MP Rowan Ramsey has found himself positioned alongside Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Treasurer Josh Frydenberg on a political hit list. We're giving the public right now the opportunity to vote on those hard right blockers they most want to see unelected come the general election. The list, consisting of 18 members of parliament dubbed the hard right, are being put to a vote. Whoever receives the most votes will be the primary target of Get Up's 2019 campaign. We've seen them blocking action on climate change, stopping investment investment in renewable energy, taking a completely inhumane approach to refugees and asylum seekers. The group has been credited for toppling Liberal MPs in the past, including the defeat of Jamie Briggs from the seat of Mayo in the 2016 election. Get Up will face an uphill challenge if they choose to target Grey, a rural demographic and a Liberal voting heartland for the past 25 years. Rowan Ramsey has rebuked the campaign for labelling him a member of the hard right. I struggle with people that try and put labels on me. I think pretty much I will call it down the line in, in, in pursuit of good outcomes for my constituents. Mr Ramsey has also dismissed GetUp as disreputable for their connections to the Labor leadership. Bill Short much sat on their committee. He gave them $100,000 when he was in the AWU. With a federal election anticipated for May, Gray looks to be a contested seat. Dominic Beaton. 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, concerns raised by the Centre Alliance over the future of our local airports. And we take a look at the annual show and shine car show. Welcome back. South Australian Senator Rex Patrick says regional airports are at risk of losing commercial services due to the cost of new security requirements. He's calling on the federal government to step in and pay for them. Our regional airports are a gateway for both incoming tourists and businesses. They're set for a change, with new legislation mandating X-ray and scanning devices at major regional airports, with the federal government set to foot the bill. However, running costs at about $750,000 a year won't be, causing turbulence in local councils over upkeep. The federal government is intimating they're going to fund that to the tune of a million dollars. Whilst that is welcome, 
uh, that is still somewhere short of the cost. At Wyler Airport, the maintenance cost would be up to $80 per passenger per flight. Senator Rex Patrick says this is unsustainable, warning without federal support, services could be grounded. Managing Director of Rex Airlines, uh, Mr John Sharp, uh, he has advised me that depending on the way this plays out, he may well have to pull out of some routes. Centre Alliance Giles candidate Andrea Broadfoot says any cuts would be devastating. We want to make sure that those airports are profitable and also that we make sure that tourists are visiting. Rowan Ramsey has dismissed their concerns as a stunt. He says new legislation contains measures that will likely spare our two major airports. Allowed uh, within the operations of the regulator flexibility to deal with low throughput um, uh, airports. John Hunt, Spencer Golf News. Port Augusta Council has traded traditional meeting proceedings for the outdoors, with those elected and members of the public taking a walking tour of council assets. The meeting raised concerns about some areas in the town. As far as council meetings go, this isn't your average one. The contingent of elected members and the public strolling through the town to visit some of the assets, discussing the concerns and future of many sites. Uh, the management team provided a, a detailed explanation of what we're trying to achieve and where we're going. One pressing issue is the condition of roads, curbs and footpaths. Throughout the council boundaries there are nearly 200 kilometres of sealed road as well as 122 kilometres of footpaths with much of it degraded. Our roads and our paths have not been made, it feels like they've not been made, maintained for a long time. The community also voiced concerns about dead grass patches in Gladstone Square. You know, in the park across the way here, the, the condition of it at the moment is not very good. As well as the tidiness of the CBD. Need to be maintained, need to be made look nice. But the main issue on everyone's tongues is the future of the 130-year-old tea jetty, which has been closed to swimmers since 2014 and was last year signed off for demolition. In previous times when jetties have been demolished, the wood has been discarded. However, the council is looking at preserving its history by retaining the timber for projects in the town. What we're trying to do is capture some of the timbers and possibly give the community an opportunity to put forward what we could do with those, outdoor furniture and so forth. The council are hopeful to have the demolition complete before the start of next summer. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. A man from Port Pirie has been arrested for the possession of a firearm. Police say they had cause to search the 29-year-old's backpack, leading to the, to the discovery of a concealed weapon. He has been charged with aggravated possession of a firearm and two counts of breaching an intervention order. Police say they also located equipment used for the consumption of cannabis. He has been refused police bail and will appear in Port Pirie's Magistrates Court early this week. Cars from eras gone by were once again in the spotlight during Port Lincoln's annual show and shine over the weekend. Hundreds of various vehicles were out on display, including some particularly rare classic cars. Vintage vehicles returning to their former glory. This is the feature event for the year for the Lincoln Auto Club. And what a marvellous day, what a marvellous turnout of people. We've got over about 130 vehicles of all shapes and sizes, as you can see. Hundreds of spectators and car enthusiasts turned out for a walk down memory lane. I like to see the nice Holdens, nice Monaros, and yeah, you know, yeah, it brings back lots of memories. It's a lot of reminiscing, and I used to have one of those cars, or, you know, oh, my dad had one like that, I wish I still had it, you know, that type of thing, yeah. There was everything from classic motorcycles to old farm trucks and even a vintage speedboat. Many owners proud to show off their pride and joy. I built the, the whole car with the correct parts and the car uses a cranking method to start it. Uh, it's all made with brass, all correct 1913 parts. But it was the connection to the rock and roll era that helped showcase this one-of-a-kind Corvette. The very rare 1956 Corvette. There are one of only four in the world. There are four surviving cars like that in the world and one of them is here today. It came from America originally. It's a, as you can see it's a left-hand drive. So it's a, an American car um, and it was built in 1956. And in true 1950s style, the day was filled with plenty of rock and roll dancing. Case of Law, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
The Corn SES has welcomed the addition of drone technology to boost their local unit. The UAV is poised to greatly assist the volunteers on ground in search and rescue operations conducted across the Flinders Ranges. Drones were one hot item on many Christmas wish lists and now the Corn SES will also utilise the technology to be their eye in the sky. We brought out the drones as a way to further support and, and enhance the capabilities that our volunteers have. The unit is one of 12 across the state to receive the drones and could prove vital in locating missing persons in the hiking hotspots of the Flinders. Normally every year during the tourist season, especially Wilpena, um, there's always people go missing. The SES say the drone will aid their volunteers in search and rescues with the ability to cover hundreds of metres from the air. The more eyes that we've got around to find somebody, the better. And, and, and the drone will search a 100 metre wide path. The South Australian SES is also the first in the country to have licensed pilots flying these drones. With their civil aviation qualifications secured, they will be able to hover into restricted airspaces. So we can fly them in support of emergency operations where normally um, we ask people not to fly their drones. And while the volunteers are thankful the drones haven't had to be used in an emergency, they're focused on practising their flying skills for when there's an actual emergency. Just to make sure that their skills are, are up to the standard so they can help their community. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. The state's best swimmers gather in Port Perry for the country championships and we'll go around the region's cricket grounds as they return from their Christmas break. Welcome back. Port Perry's new sporting precinct has hosted its first major event since its grand opening. The state country swimming championships made a splash with 400 competitors testing out the new pools. The new country state swimming championships have put Port Pirie's new aquatic centre on the map after the venue hosted 34 clubs from across Australia. The event kicked off with a mayoral reception prior to competition. We are so proud of Port Pirie, all the hard work we've done as far as putting together our aquatic centre. Over 400 swimmers from across regional South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales took part in the four-day event. For Swimming SA, it's an exciting time to showcase regional talent, many of whom have swam under the radar. Yeah, it's a stepping stone, um, but a lot of famous Olympic swimmers have come from country championships. We have Kyle Chalmers in Port Lincoln. They're all country kids who started at these championships and went on to the, uh, the top levels of international competition. Faced with a belter of a heat wave, any chance to get cool in the pool was welcomed. Amongst those excited to take part was Port Pirie's own swimming club. Its members happy to get their toes wet after a lengthy break away from the pool during the centre's renovations. A little bit nervous, it's been a while, but I'm really keen to see what it's like to go against people all around. The event also boasts being the last in Australia to hold country championships at regional locations, making it more accessible for all involved. Uh, just a great event. Plenty of rivalry, plenty of great friendship. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. Turning to cricket now and the action has returned after the Christmas break. In Wyala, the focus is on the T20 cricket with Central Wyala making a strong start to the competition. John Hunt joins us now. John, they went two from two on the weekend. Yes, Louise, two rounds of matches were played over the weekend as T20 cricket returned for another year. Centrals have been the dominant team in Wyala cricket for a number of years, but hadn't won a T20 flag in over seven. Facing South Wyala, they made a big statement, dominating the Demons on their way to a win. Early Sunday morning, Central's Scott Collison dominated with the bat at Memorial Oval. He made a staggering 127 in a punishing display that included 15 fours and five sixes. The Roosters posted a whopping 4 for 2 to 6 from their 20 overs, leaving South a mammoth chase ahead of them. Despite some shot making and good running between wickets, the Demons were never in the hunt. Young Daniel Marinkovic was the star with the ball, taking 4 for 13 from his 
its four overs to help Centrals to a crushing victory. Looking at Saturday's results now, and Centrals held off Rapina by 28 runs, with Jaden Croft taking four for 18 to restrict Rapina to 111. Meanwhile, North were too strong for South, cruising to a 10-wicket win in just 11 overs. Matt Quist top scored with 68. In Port Piri, props were too strong for Solis, while Wandera had a win over Southport to remain two games clear at the top of the table. Up in Port Augusta, there was a major upset, with bottom place West defeating top of the table South in a nail-biter, while Quorn were too good for Central Sterling, winning by four wickets. Broken Hill cricket was cancelled due to the hot weather, while Port Lincoln cricket remains on its summer break, with the T20 comp due to kick off next weekend. So that's a wrap from across the region as the second half of the season gets underway. It's not just cricket getting back into gear, with plenty of other sports also returning from the Christmas break, and we'll bring you those results tomorrow night. But for now, it's back to you. Stay with us, dry days ahead. After the break, Britt Allen will join us with all the latest weather details. Welcome back. And time now for a look at the day's weather with Britt Allen. Thanks, Louise. We had a dry and sunny day across the Gulf today. Port Augusta reached a top of 45 degrees. It was 39 in Wyala, the same in Adelaide, 31 in Port Lincoln, 44 in Broken Hill with a little bit of cloud cover, and 41 in Port Pirie. A high pressure system west of Perth extended a ridge across the waters below South Australia today, joining another high pressure system over the Tasman Sea. And between these two highs sits a broad trough of low pressure, which will persist through the week, keeping us dry over the next few days before a change comes through on Friday. Looking at the waters for tomorrow, southeasterly winds shifting southwesterly up to 20 knots, seas increasing to one and a half metres in the early evening with south to southwesterly swells. And the sun will rise at 6.22 tomorrow morning with sunset just after 8.30. It's looking to be a mostly fine day tomorrow with 44 the top for Port Augusta, Broken Hill 45, Wayala, Port Pirie and Clare all looking at a top of 43 and sunny and 32 for Port Lincoln. Looking ahead through the week now, a fine couple of days for Port Lincoln, 29 on Wednesday, 30 on Thursday, with that change coming through to bring some showers on Friday. Cleave, cloudy and 37 on Wednesday, Thursday, 32, and showers and 39 on Friday. Cloud cover for Woodner on Wednesday, 43, 37 on Thursday, Friday, fine and 33. Wyala, 41 on Wednesday, cooling down a little on Thursday, 35 degrees, and some showers on Friday. Port Augusta, fine and 43 on Wednesday, a cloudy day ahead on Thursday, Friday, a top of 38, 43 degrees across the board for Kadena. Port Piri, a top of 41 on Wednesday, 40 and cloudy cloudy on Thursday, cooling down on Friday. Clare, mostly fine, 42 on Wednesday, 35 on Thursday with showers to end the week. And Broken Hill, partly cloudy with temperatures remaining in the mid 40s. So Louise, we've got some fine days ahead of us before the change comes through on Friday. Back to you. Thanks Britt and that is nightly news for your Monday evening. Thanks for joining us with our new look but your same local news team. We'll have updates later but until then enjoy your evening. Good night.